Hello, I'm reviewing Deadpool and Wolverine, and I give this a 10 out of 10 why I think this is the best comic book movie by Marvel ever. I think this is the best, I mean, this is like probably the also the best comic book movie I've ever seen in my life, actually. Story-wise and character-wise and cinematic-wise. Deadpool and Wolverine is phenomenal, I thought, of a movie. I give it a 10 out of 10 because it completely outsmarted me in every way. And basically impressed me. Was everything, even the weaker points of the movie that it had. Like, I thought Channing Tatum's Gambit was definitely a weaker point of the movie. And so was a, a Jennifer Garner's Electra. Personally, I think it would have been more of a better camp if we got a cameo of Ben Affleck's Daredevil instead of Jennifer Garner's Electra. Instead of the same, instead of the way Ben Affleck's Daredevil or as a line for a gag. I thought it was kind of a dumb thing. Kind of made me almost cringe. But, uh, it was still kind of funny of a scene of the, of, of how he gets mentioned. Ben Affleck's Dear Devil was in the content of the movie by Elektra. Even though it might be almost cringe how it's delivered, the line, by, uh, Jennifer Garner's Elektra. Once we find out what happened to Dear Devil, she just doesn't miss him or is okay with it, I don't know. It, it, it's for laugh, but really this makes me kind of, uh, it's not the, it's really, I don't know if it's, 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 it's basically that's, it's as much as I enjoy this movie, that's, that's a weaker point of the movie, but even then, I don't think the weaker points of the movie could have been done better than what they ended up doing with them. At least I don't think I could do, do it any better than what they, what, what they did with the cameos. Was Jen Fagano as Electra and Sharon Tatum as Gambit. And I enjoyed the, uh, everything about this movie. A whole lot about this movie I enjoy. Everything pretty much about this damn movie was good to me. Had great payoff and plot twists with plot threads, with turns, plot turns in the movie. Like, we get to see Wesley Snape's version of Blade Return and The Void, when Deadpool's in The Void, which where the majority of the movie takes place with him and Wolverine take place the majority of in this place called The Void. Basically, it's a prison, a little prison. Uh, it's explains a prison uh, for... Uh, it's a little prison from the... invented by this... Time Cop team called the TVA is explained in the movie by Johnny Storm's Chris Evans Johnny Storm replies the role as his version of Johnny Storm only to get brutally murdered in uh, the most funniest way possible due to Deadpool ratting him out of how crude his hum his his mouse is of how how much of how bad his how how uh how vulgar his mouth is when he rings up this girl called Cassandra, who, who, Cassandra, I think her name is, anyway, she's the sister of Professor Xavier. It's explained the movie. And... What she does is she kills Darian Storm by taking and removing all of his skin from his body with her powers. 
vacuums basically the skin off his entire body from her so squeaky clean. Just the skin. <laughs> and um It's actually a pretty gruesome and funny gag I love of a scene play out. And We find out this post-credits scene after the movie is over, after the end credits is over, that John Storm said these things on camera, and the TV had caught it on camera, all those things that he got killed off for, that I've said about uh, Charles's uh, sister. Uh, and uh, she was the main villain of the movie, and she was actually a legit non non waste, but she was actually a legit interesting and fretting villain of the movie, who was the main threat of the movie, and even in the third act and the falling near of the movie, it, once they're in the void by the TVA because of Deadpool recruiting the worst variant of Wolverine within the multiverse. The one who let down his X Men and his Earth. And the reason why he let down because he was his X Men and his Earth is because he was out uh, drinking at uh, at a bar while basically he uh, basically he it's like a, basically he has a drinking problem. Uh, even uh, he basically is basically because he has a drinking problem. It's like. Uh, and we find this slogan has a drinking problem, uh, even more so than the one from from the Logan movie from 2017, which was the a different Logan than the one we see in this movie, a different Wolverine. That's the one we see in the original trilogy to Fox universe by Fox X Men trilogy. That's the one that concludes in Logan, got killed off in Logan, and it's explained in the movie that that's, uh, X, that, uh, Logan took place on Deadpool's Earth, in his timeline. And the reason why I bring this up is because the TVA has noticed that Deadpool's timeline, where he's from, lost his anchor being, and then his anchor being was Wolverine. Expect that loud lighting. Sorry about that. I got scared. <laughs> I didn't expect lighting to be that fucking loud. <laughs> so yeah, basically, it's like uh, in the TVA. Like this guy that works with the TVA. Is kind of going rogue and doing his own thing with a TVA brand, and basically he what he wants now that he uh, knows that he's lost that Deadpool's lost his anchor being character, which was Logan, and since 2017 he's lost it, that anchor character from 2017, and uh, so um, from 2017's Logan movie, that's when Logan died, uh, and for that movie is when we got released. And, um, that kind of plays into the outcome of what's happening to Deadpool's reality, why it's going to get erased. But what this guy that has his own agenda that works for the TV, he just wants to speed up Deadpool's, uh, um, dying timeline faster and not just let it die of old age and just want to speed up time. And he's offering Deadpool a way out so he to save his own ass but not save his friends. Though, so this leads him to recruiting the worst Wolverine in the multiverse of a variant of Wolverine that's also played by Hugh Jackman. This time with the yellow costume. And yes, he does wear the mask in the climax of the third act of the movie. 
during the final battle and keeps on from there on out. And doesn't take it off, thank God. That was awesome. Once I saw the him wearing the mask. But if I may, I, but I got mad. I wish this was he would he would have uh, worn that a little sooner in the movie, like when uh, when the uh, when he was still in the void. I wish he wore it at some point when he uh, was still in the void. You know, with a uh, this is the, this is part in the movie where where Devil teams up with all these uh, uh, heroes from the void that got trapped in the void, but haven't uh, been erased from history by. Uh, the thing that wants to eat them, that's basically a cloud dragon thing. Forget the name of this creature. But it lives within the void, the valve that's alive in the void in the open for lunch. It seems to be. Uh, that kind of, be, I don't, that's just, uh, I don't know that much about this, this uh, character in this movie. Uh, uh, from, uh, I don't know much, I, I know, I don't know much about this cat outside of the movie that's in the void, the, the, the little cloud dragon thing. I forget the name of, uh, yeah, so, which, again, it's a pretty cool effect, I gotta admit, uh, uh, that dragon, uh, cloud is kind of a cool thing, uh, visually, to look at. I love how there were tons of cameras, but none of them felt like they were shoved in for no reason, without rhyme and reason. It, like, none of them felt like they were shoved in there without any reasons. They just felt like the, the cameras like that were in, that were, and there were a lot of cameos in that movie, the, the, this movie, I think. Like, even Happy Holdman makes a cameo when interacts with Deadpool for a brief moment, has a meme with Hot Hot Talk with him. A pep talk. And this leads him to getting up the role of Deadpool and becoming a Carl dealer. And... Then one day, uh, during his birthday, he probably gets kidnapped by the TVA. And... That goes to worse. Find out his universe is dying at the... Not that it's like his universe time because his ink could be dying, but also because this guy that's going rogue against the TVS orders has decided he wants to sort of make things worse for Deadpool's timeline by destroying it completely and just a rag gang, which is a device. This is going to make these things up. It was destroy his universe that he loves part of, but uh, there's a way out for Deadpool and it's not for the one he loves. But the way out is to let him join the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he says no. He but he decides to he, he basically decides not to do that, but to go and find a variant of Wolverine to save his timeline. After he digs up Wolverine's corpse, the corpse of Wolverine from the Logan movie, the same corpse. Except now he's been reduced to bones, nothing but bones, and his family, in fact, it doesn't work because the reason why he digged him up because he refused to be able to believe that healing factor does fails eventually with old age, with the amantium in the bones because it doesn't make any sense because healing factor doesn't work like this. So, and uh, that's what he's telling us to the audience, and uh, he finds out to be wrong, ironically. <laughs> Once he digs up his corpse, it's reduced to nothing but amantium bones, skeletons. And then the TV finds him. He uses the skeletons as weapons while breakdancing to music and an opening intro. Which was a pretty, pretty exciting intro to the movie. 
opening intro to the movie was pretty cool. I love this movie. It's very solid, I thought. And I like the fact when uh, all the other, I like the fact where all the other, I like the, the fact that all the other variants of Wolverine that he tries to recruit, pretty much try to kill him right away, or he just leaves him for dead. Because one's like, for example, he doesn't even bother to free the one that was being crucified, uh, for some reason. And, um, so he ends up re recruiting the wrong, the worst Wolverine in the multiverse. Because, uh, assume because that Wolverine is having a, wearing his comic book actor costume, that means he must have liked something for his hero. Uh, because, some, he must have liked, figured he must be a team player because he's wearing the costume. And then we find out this Wolverine let his X-Men and, uh, after he let his X-Men die, he went on killing spree. After he came back to X Mansion and came back from the bar, getting drunk, and found out that his X Men friends would die, so he was already slaughtered by humans, and they was being slaughtered. They was already slaughtered by the time he came back from the bar uh, that he was at, and they called out. They, and they kept on wanting him to wear the costume. But he never wore it because he never officially became an X Men member because he never went on it. He never joined the X Men. He just, he, he, even though they were, he, I guess he, it's like explained that the, even though the, he cared a like about the X Men, uh, 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 he, like he is also has major guilt because he let his X Men. Uh, Technically down because he wasn't there with them and never took on the whole hero mantle of becoming a team player like uh, like Wolverine's known for in the comics and in the like uh, like unlike Wolverine in the comics uh, where, where Wolverine has to uh, like you know you know how like uh, so it's, it's it's kind of like it's kind of a re, it kind, it's, so it's kind of like interesting to see this Wolverine kind of a uh, uh, wearing the iconic ye yellow costume and also uh, kind of being far from the Wolverine we want to see with the yellow costume, but then in the end, after, but I guess like if I get, but then it, but if I do uh, it, like effort uh, and and that's how it kind of comes across as uh, like as as comes across as, as that's how he, I guess I I wish I really like that because I don't think uh, cool interesting how I play out and how he changed more into the iconic hero Wolverine from the comics he because he acted more like he, like he actually he act, I like how it, as the film went on he acted more heroic gradually slowly uh, and it felt like a gradual nice progression for Wolverine's character uh, from basically turning into this loser variant of Wolverine to be Basically, uh, uh, one hell of a, uh, 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 a hero uh, variant, of, uh, a heroic variant of Wolverine, like many other, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like, Hugh, like, like Hugh Jackman was, Hugh, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine variant. And so, uh, I enjoyed this movie a lot. Uh, you know, the Hugh Jackman variant from uh, the original X Men trilogy, is what I'm referring to now. Why I said that. Okay. I enjoy this movie a lot. And I give this a 10 out of 10. My favorite character in the movie was Wolverine. Played by Hugh Jackman. The very he played. That was the, that's the main one we followed along in the movie. The one with the yellow costume. 
And I think my favorite fan service is the fact he wore, finally wore the yellow costume and the, and the mask. That comic kind of mask and costume from the comics. So, in our rated fashion, it felt like a Wolverine peaked to his full potential by the end of the movie. And that's what I loved about this movie, plus he wore the iconic costume. And I like that he became buddy buddies with Deadpool by the end. Of the Deadpool and Wolverine movie that I'm talking about. Yeah, I like how both of them save the multiverse from total, uh, based from from uh, from a villain from the main villain trying to rewrite history and just make sure it's not nothing but the void left, and by erasing everything but the void in history, so everyone would live in the void, and um. I like how both Deadpool and Wolverine save the multiverse, and I like the whole thing, and uh, the whole thing of the movie. All the writing, and all the jokes, all the action, the climax, and everything, and all the costumes. Uh, and uh, I like a lot of the stuff in this movie. And I like Wesley Snipes as his Blade. This is the best Blade movie he's ever played since the first Blade movie. Blade was the best he's been since the first Blade movie. He's that good in this movie. And guess what? He doesn't he doesn't get he doesn't get killed off as a gag or at all. He actually got to see him kick ass. Alongside Gambit, by by Jim Tim, Jim Garner's Electra, lead by Jim Garner, and Laura uh, reprising her role from Logan, played by the same actress, same variant of Laura from Logan in this movie, uh, is what she's playing in this movie. In the climax, we get to see her in the fight, and we get to see Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and Ryan Reynolds Deadpool uh, in the fight in this it was a pretty cool fight even though it's, it, 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 even even though it's not the climax of the uh, final climax in the movie it's like it's still a cool fight there's a lot of cool action in this movie and lots of cool story uh, uh, all of them and jokes is in succeeds and pay off so well and pace well, the all very everything's very pace well that I appreciate of everything taking its time and seeing the story unfold. And this one is very, very funny, and uh, it, it also has like kind of this uh darkish uh, sense of humor. Like, this is part where, like, a Deadpool takes the variant of him as a human shield and finds out that his human his his variant doesn't have a healing factor or any powers, but just a pretty face. <laughs> so he tries to take him to, ho to take him to safety, which is a donut uh, stand, which he. And he ends up getting him killed by using a human shield again after his head blows up. And keeps and he I like, think it's pretty funny how like uh, he basically robbed him of his of his body of the guns that Deadpool variant. He robbed the co-ops of his, uh, 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 
the the very a variant of himself, Deadpool did. Which I thought that was kind of funny, and pretty damn funny, I thought. This is my favorite of Deadpool movie of the trilogy of his made. Best Deadpool movie ever and best Wolverine movie ever, I say. And best Marvel movie ever to see in live action or animated cartoon form. That's straight to movies or straight to home video is what I have to say about that. Is what I believe is how much I've enjoyed this movie. Deadpool and Wolverine was a 10 out of 10 for me. I enjoyed it. I want to see this movie again a second time. I saw it yesterday. It was phenomenal. Blew my mind. Which is imagination, action, and is great storytelling. And it's emotional beast and his sick humor of comedy, of crude humor. With blood and gore to go around, to spare. 